Today, I'm going to tell you about the most spine-chilling, disturbing, gut-wrenching analog horror series I've ever seen. This series, while only having five videos, manages to tell a compelling story involving a cold-blooded serial killer and the dozens of families they've shattered into pieces. Join me on this journey, friends, and get ready. This story... <sighs> this one's on another level. Investigating the homicide cases of Carla Gray, Jackie Graham, and James Miller, police find themselves in an abandoned storage facility in an undisclosed location. While searching the area, they discover three extremely frightening paintings, all seemingly done by the same person. These paintings had their titles on the backs, which strangely enough, included the names of the people who had been killed. Carla's teeth, floating Jackie, and James's secret face. Surely this was a coincidence, right? Could these illustrations belong to the person they're looking for? They decided it'd be best to keep the artworks for later inspection. Two months after the discovery of the first three paintings, a staggering seven more would be found. These paintings worried police, as the titles seen on the backs of these specific artworks seemed to include new names, names that were not associated with any known case they had on file at that time. These included Wax Doll Tom, Lisa's Secret Face, Hanging Jimmy, Daniel After the Fire, Jennifer's Last Stare, Scream Maggie Scream, and um... This one, I'm just gonna call it Corey. The killer had surely struck again, but this time the bodies had not been found, and they wouldn't be found for a long period of time. Around three months after the findings were made, a police officer by the name of Bill Collins would go missing along with his wife and two daughters shortly after he came across a bizarre painting in his home, simply titled, Self Portrait. This would be the first time we get a look at the disturbed individual that had been committing these abhorrent crimes. The search of Bill's house would eventually lead to the attic, where police would find Bill's infant daughter hanging by the neck, dead. She was just two months old. Just 12 days after Bill's daughter was identified, police would find Bill's car abandoned by the ocean getting slowly consumed by the waves. Inside the empty vehicle, they happened upon another painting. This one titled, Long Neck Angel. Angel, of course, being the name of Bill's daughter, who had been killed just two weeks before. The search for the Collins would eventually lead police to a deserted lighthouse just a few miles from the family's car. Upon arrival, officers were baffled by the strange, abstract face that had been painted on the entrance door. Could this be another victim? With this question tucked into the back of their minds, they pressed onward into the old lighthouse. Inside, they were met with a grisly scene, something they were not ready for. The scalded, charred corpse of a missing teen known as Daniel Williams was found lying on the ground. Daniel, huh? We remember him, don't we? With this connection to their case made, they continued to search the dark, desolate tunnels under the building that hadn't seen the light of day in years. Not far into the tunnels, police would uncover two more bodies, the likes of which belonged to sisters Lisa and Jennifer White, both also having previously discovered paintings named after them. But they couldn't investigate long. A horrid smell was beckoning them to the back room. Police had to venture deeper. They had to get to the bottom of this, and what they would find would put an end to the Collins family investigation. Inside the back room was a damp barrel that seemed to be leaking out of the bottom. Officers could almost feel the hairs on their noses singe into dust as they grew closer. They removed the top cover of the barrel, and immediately it became clear what that disgusting stench was. It was the rest of the Collins family reduced to jumbled chunks of meat and bones stained with red. Police knew they had a lunatic on their hands, but this? They needed more information. What about the four other people depicted in these paintings that hadn't been located? Where were they? Of course, the story wouldn't end there. Only two weeks after this whole ordeal, siblings Corey and Margaret Beck were reported missing to the local police. Officers immediately drew a connection to one of the paintings they had previously received. 
With this connection drawn, the relentless search began to find these defenseless little kids, which, unfortunately, would come up fruitless. Five days of tireless searching later, police would be led to an abandoned paper mill factory. They scoured the building top to bottom and found nothing, until they came across perhaps one of the most shocking discoveries yet. Inside one of the rooms were the remains of the children, but most horrendous of all was the state of which their bodies were discovered. Only the lower half of Corey's body and the upper half of Margaret's body were located, both sewn together in a sloppy, almost careless manner. Autopsy showed Margaret's neck had been broken in several places, and a brick had been forcefully shoved down her throat while she was still alive. This showed police this person was clearly demented, psychotic, unfeeling, able to dismember, mangle, and torture their victims without so much as a tremor. This person was a monster. They didn't even want to know what awful things this person could be doing to the other half of these poor children's bodies. But they had a feeling they already knew. Alright guys, I really want to talk about this more, but much like the Welcome Home video, there's just simply too much information to tackle in one video. But don't worry, a part 2 is already in the works, so expect that real soon. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you know exactly when that comes out. And again, as I mentioned before, there's only 5 videos totaling about 16 minutes of footage, so go check them out if you haven't already, link in the annotation. It is a truly disturbing and wild ride, you guys. And if I missed anything or got anything wrong, make sure to let me know in the comments and I'll correct it in part 2. Alright guys, that's it for me. I love every single one of you with all my heart. Thank you guys for watching.